Hello everybody. And the rain stopped and it's actually been snowing here today. We're in the southeast of England. We are at the end of February, beginning of March. It's the buddy, what's the date today? 27th of February. And we've got these birch trees here and I want to see if I can tap them for sap. Now Barry's on his way up and he's got this other way of tapping for sap that may not cause as much damage to the tree as what I'm about to do but I'm going to be drilling a hole in the tree but it's not as big as what we've seen before so I'm going to give it a go and see if it gives us a decent yield so stand by and we'll see what happens Buddy. So these ones are just a little bit too small. We're looking for something bigger. There's a few big ones here. So it's important we don't do it on the very young trees. We want to mature birch tree because otherwise we're just going to stress that tree out and cause it damage. Excuse me. So this one looks fairly good. So for our experiment, we're going to be using this fine specimen here. We shouldn't cause it too many problems by tapping it for some sap. We just got to make sure we tidy up after ourselves properly. I've got my bit and brace. I'm going to go up at an angle, insert my tube, and then hang my billy cam from the tree. So we're using a six mil bit in our brace. We're going to go up. at an angle so we're going to go up at about this angle I'm going to brace it against my thigh And you can see the sap is already coming out. So we use a metal straw and we just place it in that hole. And you see it's already dripping out. So our straw's in the hole, obviously dripping out the bottom. Got a nice flow on it. Our belly can goes against the tree. You've got to make sure that when this is full up, it's going to be able to take the weight. So I'm going to thread the working end through our loop. Nice and tight. And I'm just going to do a timber hitch. It's got a really nice flow on it. It's not coming out around the straw. It's not dripping down the tree. I'm not really bothered at present if anything gets in the top of the billy can because once it's full up, 
I'll strain it through a muslin cloth and that will clean any particulates that are in it and then we can bottle it boil it down make syrup put it in the freezer to keep it for a couple of months this is going to last three to four weeks in the fridge but it's the best thing about spring so Barry's arrived he's come up with this brilliant idea of getting sap out of a birch tree and I've managed to get this is our peg I've just thrown it over the branch so he thinks he can get as much sap out of this branch as I can out of my hole so let's let's give it a go and see what happens so what's this idea you've come up with Barry right well it's not my idea but oh you've stolen it I've stolen it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peg this branch down and then we're going to cut the branch and put a bottle at the end of it and that way as the sap rises up through the tree and out to the branches it will drip out the end and fill the bottle and doing it this way means that there's less damage to the tree because trees don't heal they seal so where that straw went in earlier that part of the tree will always be dead but if we cut this the branches will continue to grow and the only risk to the tree is to this branch because if anything goes wrong then the tree will seal it off at the end of the branch and lose the branch if anything goes wrong on the other tree then it's risking the whole trunk and the whole tree but that goes the same with any joint so if any any diseases get into the branch where we're cutting it where the joint is that's where the tree will cut off the supply of sap if it gets past that joint it will go to the next joint until it reaches the trunk of the tree so this way it's a lot safer for the tree So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this branch at an angle using the saw first and then we'll tidy it up with a nice knife later. We're aiming for about 30 degrees. There we go. Like that. And it's dripping already, look at that. So I've got quite a big container. Um, this is, it's got this handy handle so I can um, tie onto that and then tie that onto the tree to give it some extra security. Um, you can use smaller bottles and you can just tape them on. Um, that should work fine as well. So we'll show you that as well. What I'm gonna do before we go though, is cut that little branch out of the way. Keep the lid safe. Get the end of the branch in the bottle. And then we should. We just tie that off around there. So. so then we just put some tape over the top and that'll stop any rainwater going in there. It's not going to rain. It won't rain. It's not going to rain. Doesn't look like it. Not at the moment. Tomorrow, about 9am. Looking good, there. Barry. I, li I like it. I like it better than my method. <coughs> Fine is not interested.
There we go. So that should provide some protection from the rain. And we can just leave that going. So today's experiment yes. is to compare tapping a birch tree for sap my way and cutting a limb your way. So what's the benefit that we well I think we've already seen the benefit of both ways a little yeah. bit. Who bought that? That that would be me. <laughs> so your way, yes. You seem to be getting a bigger yield. Yeah, you're getting more sap out of the tree quicker. Yes. <clears throat> my way's going a little bit slower, but it's still flowing. My way has less of a risk to the tree. So, from a sustainability point of view, my way's winning. And it's more contained. So less contamination into your sap. Yeah. Whereas mine's open. Yeah. Yeah. So if it rains, we're both going to get a bit of rainwater in. I'll get a bit of runoff down the branch. But yours is an open container. You're going to get a lot more in. But it's not raining. It's not raining. Not yet. So it's fine. I think for our purposes, using a branch to get your birch sap is the best method. Yeah. Comes back to sustainability. It comes back to doing everything you can to protect the tree and it comes back to not upsetting the landowner. But I've drilled into the tree <coughs> and immediately triggered endophytic fungi to start decay in that tree. Yeah. So, the conversation really is about how trees work when they're damaged and that is that they don't heal like we would heal a wound. No, they just seal over, don't they? They seal around it, so they don't heal, they seal. Um, and where you've drilled into the tree, you will end up with a little bit of dead wood that's compartmentalised away from the rest of the tree. So the tree will live around it but there will be this little bit of dead wood in there um, that will eventually get covered over and, and be somewhere in that trunk. And leave a knot for the person that cuts it down to make a plank. But if something goes wrong and that process doesn't work right, something else gets in there too quick, then yeah. the risk to that tree is huge. Is huge because you would lose the whole tree. Whereas if something goes wrong with mine, then the tree's going to lose a branch. So my, my method isn't risking the tree. Well, there's a chance that you can go into the main trunk of the tree, but that's so minimal. Yeah. Because every, every joint... It's got another opportunity to wall off, compartmentalise. And if it does kill the branch, it will die back into the tree a little bit, fall off, and then just seal over again. Yeah. So I think your way is it's a more healthier way of collecting sap, especially in a bushcraft sense, because we never really we never really want litres and litres and litres of the stuff. Do we? No, we don't need it, do we? It's a nice thing to do yeah. in the spring. Yeah. And I think your way is the best way to do that. Yeah. It's more sustainable. You're not going to upset the landowner because you killed his tree. Don't do it without the landowner's permission, by the way. They're not your trees. We're, we're not living in a time where we've gone all winter without Neutral. sugars and carbohydrates and, and 
Well, you might not have. I'm wasting away. But if you were living in a time where you didn't have sugar, that would be the, the sweet nectar of spring <clears throat> you were tasting there. It's and it true. would give your body things that, that it hasn't had for the a long time. The nutrients are very dependent on where the tree is growing. So magnesium and potassium yeah. changes where, wherever the tree is. So your tree may taste a little bit sweeter than mine. I think Barry's does, because he's not going to kill his. <laughs> so we've had a frost last night, because it's so cold. As you can see, we've got no sap rising. Once the temperature changed, that'll all start and it'll start again. But these have been up all night. They're a bit icy cold this morning. Let's go and check Barry's. So as you can see, this is Barry's one. And it's just frozen on the end of the branch. Okay, so the rain's arrived. Because I actually want birch sap to drink. I'm going to take my belly cans down. Obviously Barry doesn't have to do this because his shield is up. But first of all, I need a bit of the branch that Barry's cut off. Barry. Yeah. Where did you put the branch you cut off? Uh, over this way. Is that one? No, not that one. Right on. But you don't need to make a plug, Barry, because the tree's going to sort your yeah your cut out. But see, I'm tapering this so it fits in the hole nice and snug. So the the thought or the myth behind it is some people think that that will grow in the tree and the tree will absorb it as oh no and this would just be a dead bit of wood yeah and the tree will grow around it okay so it is like cutting a severed thumb off and sticking it in a wound well exactly like, like you said earlier it seals doesn't heal mm. but that will help keep a bit of dirt out maybe it will keep the dirt out and stop it from leaking that's all it does but we're seeing that your yield is near enough the same as mine. Yeah. So yeah. It's about I can't the same. see a reason why anyone would have to do this. No. And risk the tree. But it's preference, isn't it? Is it preference? I think it's personal preference. Is it? Or is yeah. there a sustainable responsibility in it? I think we've got a responsibility to be sustained. There's definitely a responsibility, but if you've seen uh, uh, a well-known and well-loved bushcrafter do it this way before, and you want to emulate that person, then you're going to go and do that, aren't you? You might do, but if you went and did that on a silver birch in your back garden, that's, that's, fine. that's much that's different to coming up here and doing it on a silver birch in, in a small amount of woodland. But there are people around the country that just go out and start digging into trees. Yeah. There's no respect, Barry. No. So I've got my tape a bit of wood. But before I put it in the hole, I've got to remove my pot. Barry, what on earth are you doing to my dog? 